How's everybody doing today? Good, good. Happy Mother's Day to you all. Um, we realize that Mother's Day can come with lots of emotions. Some of us still have little ones in the house. Some of us wish we could have had little ones and never could. Some of us have lost our mothers. Some of us had really crummy mothers. So Mother's Day can come with a lot of emotions and stuff. But I just want to say to all of you that our hearts are for you. We are so glad that you are here today. And hopefully this message is going to apply to every single person that's in this room this morning. So um, we always share... This one time a year when I get to preach, which I'm thankful that it's only one time a year because I don't think I could do it any more than that. So big props to Pastor Tim getting to do this every single week. He does a great job. He'll like put four words on a piece of paper and be able to say his whole entire message where I have like seven pages of scripted out stuff. Show, like shows a difference between he and I and, and what we're capable of here. But anyways, um, this is a picture of our family. So this is why I am a mother, is because of these boys right here. So this was taken on Easter Sunday. So this is Pastor Tim and I, and then our oldest, Grayson, who's 14, um, our middle one, Nat, who's 13, and then our youngest one is Luke. And so this is our tribe. I get to be the only princess in our house. (laughs) Stuff, but um, I love our boys, and I'm, I'm so, so thankful for them. So this is a picture of our family and what makes me a mom. So um, the sermon today is going to be called Rest Easy, and God kind of really downloaded this message in my head um, several months ago, way before I even knew that we were going to be doing a series called Mood Swingers, and when um, I was preparing for this message then to speak today, um, like, Lord, you totally knew what series we were going to be coming out of when it was time for me to give a Mother's Day talk, because this is a really amazing wrap-up to what we've been studying in the series Mood Swingers that we've been doing. Um, So today um, is going to be kind of like the end of our series Mood Swingers, and it's going to be called Rest Easy. So any of you guys um, light sleepers in the house that you just have a hard time sleeping, any noise that goes on, that is the way that I am too. Um, Several years ago, we figured out that I'm just going to wake up with every noise, and so we actually invest in a a sound machine that is like a white noise machine that I sleep right next to it because um, the doctor basically prescribed it for me. I'm like, I just just wake up all the time. She's like, you need to do whatever you need to do to get a good night's rest. And so we bought that, that sound machine, and it sits right next to me, and that really has definitely helped me to get a lot better of a night's sleep because of that. But sometimes what wakes me up is Pastor Tim is an occasional snorer. (laughs) So I don't know if we have any snorers or occasional snorers in the house, but every once in a while, he's an occasional snorer. And because I'm such a light sleeper, it wakes me up every single time he snores. I've tried several things to get him to stop snoring. Um, Sometimes I am really nice about it, and I just do the tap on the shoulder thing, just to kind of like wake him up enough to just kind of get him to stop snoring. I've tried the, Tim, you're snoring, in a nice voice kind of thing. Um, I Tim, I've tried the Tim, you need to roll over thing. Tim, you need to roll over and stuff and to try to get him to stop snoring. But some nights I'm too tired when the snoring is happening that I don't want to wake enough up enough to, to have to, like, move him or tap him on the shoulder. And so I'll, like, sometimes in a not-so-nice voice, I'll go, Tim, you're snoring, like, really loud. And it kind of wakes him up. But every once in a while, I just cannot figure out like how to do this nicely or I don't even want to wake up enough to like tell him anything and so my favorite thing to do actually is kind of comical to him but what I'll do is I'll stretch my legs out while I'm sleeping and I'll give the bed a jolt like this and it shakes the mattress enough that it kind of wakes him up enough that he stops snoring so every once in a while in the night our our bed will just shake and then he uh, uh, and then he wakes up and he stops snoring So I don't know what you guys do, but some nights you're trying to sleep and you can't sleep. And what do you do when you, even when you give your bed a jolt, it still isn't going to help you to sleep? According to the CDC, there are between 9 and 10 million Americans that use prescription sleeping medications to help them to sleep. And there are somewhere between 50 and 70 million Americans that are currently thought to suffer, suffer from sleeping disorders. So not sleeping is a serious problem for a lot of people. Um, In this series, Mood Swingers, that we've been doing here at New Hope, Pastor Tim has preached on the topics of fear and anger and sadness. 
And if you missed any of those messages, I highly recommend you going them online. You can listen to them online. We stream them on YouTube, on mynewhope.tv. You can go to the media section, click on it, and we even have podcasts available to you as well. I'm a big podcast listener, and we also have hard copies of DVDs out in our foyer area. So if you missed any of those messages, you could you listen to it one of those three ways. Um, so we've been talking about this mood swingers, fear, anger, and sadness, those kind of things. What do you do when things like that keep you up at night? It is said that anxiety, stress, and depression are some of the most common causes of chronic insomnia. Having difficulty sleeping can also make anxiety, stress, and depression symptoms worse. And other common emotional and psychological causes include anger, worry, grief, bipolar disorder, and trauma, and treating these underlying problems is essential to resolving your insomnia. So we struggle with things in our emotional self that make us not be able to sleep, and then we can't sleep, and the things get worse, because we're going on an emotional self, no rest, and then everything gets worse. Sometimes we lay our heads down to sleep at night, hoping for a good night's rest, and all we get is our thoughts staring straight at us, keeping us from getting the rest that we were hoping for. Have you guys ever made plans with family or friends to go somewhere, and you're all excited, and you anticipated the events, and when you finally got to go, something crazy happened, like your car broke down, or somebody ended up getting sick, or the weather just turned really nasty on you, and the thing that you were anticipating and hoping for, like, it's not like it didn't happen, it happened, but it happened with, like, a whole bunch of, like, craziness thrown in. Um, that happens to me a lot, and I, I always get excited when that happens because when I, I remember my mom and I going to a place one time, and we were having this great time, and all of a sudden, like, torrential downpour, like, and both of us were soaked completely through, and we were laughing really hard when it happened. I'm like, we, and I always say, we just made a memory because it was something that was not anticipated at all that happened that helps you to remember that day. You made a memory. I love those stories, and when things like that happen, well, when I was in elementary school, my family went on a vacation down south, and we made a memory. Um, we were spending a day at a theme park down south. It was a beautiful place, had tons of flowering trees and plants everywhere, and there was a lot of entertainment things to do. There was rides and shows, and there was also a zoo part of this theme park. And our family was enjoying all the sights and activities, and we were wandering over to the, the zoo side of the park, and we were going to see all the different animal exhibits. And when we got to the tiger exhibit, the tiger exhibit had a sign in the exhibit that said, tiger is out for a walk. That's what it said, tiger's out for a walk. So apparently tigers can go out on a walk. So we kept looking at all the different animals, and soon, sure enough, here comes a tiger being, being led on a chain and a collar by one of the animal handlers that worked there at the theme park. This tiger was actually going on a walk. And it wasn't uh, an adult tiger, but it wasn't a baby tiger either. So I don't know how long it takes for tigers to mature to adulthood. So I'm just going to call it like an adolescent tiger because it wasn't an adult, but it wasn't a baby either. So we, and we noticed this tiger, and so we started to kind of walk over towards the tiger, and a whole bunch of other families noticed the tiger too, and were standing there along with us. But we were the first ones there, so we were kind of like the closest one to this tiger. And so the tiger um, saw, the, t the tiger's handler saw this crowd forming around the tiger, and so she saw it as an opportunity to give like an educational little thing about the tiger, like how old is it, what does it eat, what does it need in its habitat, and stuff like that. And now she um, kept talking, the crowd just got bigger and bigger and bigger, and I was the, in the front of this crowd, and I kept getting pushed a little bit closer and closer to this tiger. And I wasn't the only one who noticed it. The, t the tiger, he noticed it too. And the tiger and I were standing there, and the tiger's handler was having this really enjoyable Q&A time, and this tiger and I were having a staring contest. <laughs> and the tiger and I were basically similar in height because I was really small at the time, and we were standing eye to eye together you know, my eyes kept going from the tiger to the tiger's handler because she was very 
ignorant over what was happening here between the tiger and I. So I kept looking over at her, seeing how hard of a grip she had on that chain that was holding the tiger. Because the tiger and I were the only ones that were in the know that this was happening. Um, I don't know how long the tiger and I were standing there with me trying to back up, because, I, but I couldn't back up because there was a crowd right behind me. But eventually, the tiger got uh, tired of staring at me, and it leapt at me. It leapt directly at me. And it took the handler completely by surprise. She wasn't prepared for it all, and she didn't have a very good grip on the chain. And so the tiger was able to get free and had its paw directly at my chest. And the moment that it was going to swipe me, she pulled it back at the last second. And so I didn't get attacked by the tiger, um, but it scared me <laughs> a lot. I was saved. I didn't get attacked, but my knees were shaking the entire rest of the day. So our family went for this enjoyable day of a theme park thing, but we came back with this story that's got repeated over and over again of, remember when you got attacked by that tiger? And we, we've said this story many, many times. Well, in our series, Mood Swingers, we talk about our emotions. And our emotions are kind of like what happened with me and that tiger. Our emotions can cause us to stand paralyzed for, with fear, just waiting for an attack. And Jesus' enemy, Satan, can be like that tiger. He's looking for someone to devour. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. This happens to us. We, as Christ followers, are going along in our lives, and things bump up into us. And Satan wants to use those things to bump up into us, to devour us, to make us feel consumed by whatever it is that's going on in our lives. Things in our life that feel like are attacking us. And when those things we feel like are attacking us, they're really they're robbing us from the things that God has in store for us, and they're robbing us of rest. Our emotions and the evil one are two things that rob us from rest. Sometimes we escaped being attacked in situations that come up in our lives, but we still, we still face a brutal attack in our minds. Sometimes things happen like we, didn't, we were looking for um, a reason for what's causing our, our health problems or whatever. And, then, and we go through lots of tests and we go through a lot of things and only to find out that it was really nothing serious, but we spent weeks of no sleep until we finally got the final diagnosis. We weren't actually being attacked by anything, but our minds held a brutal attack during that entire time that robbed us, robbed us of rest. Sometimes things break down like a car or a house or something like that that you think is going to cost you a lot of money. And where's this money going to come from? What's going to happen? And you get brutally attacked in your mind of emotions of things that turn out to end to be uh, like a, a $10 part that needed to replace, not the entire engine or something like that. And you've been spending all this time worrying over something that really actually didn't even happen. Sometimes we do get attacked, and we're going to talk about what do you do when you do get attacked, but sometimes you don't get attacked, but you still allow yourself to go through the emotions of it, even though it doesn't actually happen. So what do we do when our thoughts and our emotions are keeping us from getting rest? Lisa Tierkirst is the president of Proverbs 31 Ministries, and here at New Hope, we went through her book, Uninvited, in our Identity Women's Bible Study. And th several, there's going to be a couple of things that I'm going to use from her book that are quotes from her, and this is one of them. Lisa Tierkirst says, The devil turns powerless when our minds turn to our all-powerful God. Um, if you guys have, I should have said this at the beginning, this is a worship program. Did you get one of these? Pastor Tim talked about this at the beginning of the service today. And anyways, on this side here is blank notes, okay? So if you guys want to take any notes, you can definitely do that on this section of your worship program. The devil turns powerless when our minds turn to an all-powerful God. Why? Because the devil knows God is way more powerful than he is. And when our minds are geared on truth, and when our minds are geared on what and who God is, Satan can have absolutely no power over us. 
we have to remember who God is, and we need to remind his enemy who we belong to. When we, our thoughts are turned to things that are attacking us, when our thoughts are turned to things that are robbing us of rest, we need to remind Satan who God is, and we need to remind him of who we belong to. Tim and I have a large plaque that hangs over our bed, and it says, I am a child of the king. He was not moved by the world, for my God is with me and goes before me. I do not fear, because I am his. This is a plaque that hangs over our bed. It, it, it covers the whole wall over our, our um, headboard and stuff. And it's a constant daily reminder of that. I am a child of the king who is not moved by the world. For my God is with me and goes before me. I do not fear because I am his. And every once in a while, one of our boys is having a bad day, and they're feeling attacked by somebody said something to them at school, and they're having anxiety over that, that statement of, of this happened and whatever, and I'll say, come here a minute, and I'll pull them into our bedroom, and I'll say, look at that, and I'll say, read it out loud to me. And they'll read it out loud, and it's a good reminder of, I remember who God is, and I remember who I belong to. We need these reminders. One thing that I came away with from almost being attacked by that, by that tiger is that God can still use you even when your knees are shaking. We're going to have problems that come in our life, and we're going to have things that cause us fear, and we're going to have a lot of things that cause us anxiety. But it's how we look at the problems that's going to make the difference. Another quote by Lisa Tierkers is that God's promises are always a perfect match for our problems. And our problem instigator, the devil, the lion, is no match for God's promises. You know what Jesus did in the wilderness when he was being tempted by Satan for 40 days? He quoted scripture to Satan, and Satan turned powerless every time Jesus did that to him. Our promises, God's promises, are always a perfect match for our problems, and our problem instigator, the devil, is no match for God's promises. God wants us to trust him. When God says in his word that we are dearly loved children, we must trust that this is true. And here's another quote from her, is that fear can't catch what it can no longer reach. Fear can't catch what it can no longer reach. That tiger was out to get me. It pursued me. It could not reach me because the handler pulled it back. That's what God does to us. We're staring problems, and we're eye to eye in it, and we're trying to back away from it, and we're trying to escape from it, and we feel powerless of how, what to do. And there's God with his collar and chain yanking those problems away from us, and he's saying, I am the answer. I have every single thing that you need. That thing that's going on in your life right now, I'm powerful enough to handle it. You just need to trust me. What are you going to focus on? The, the problem or God's promises, because God's promises are a perfect match for our problems. So we need to be in the word. His word is the collar and chain that sets us free and out of reach of our problems. In Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8, it says this, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. David was the writer of this psalm. And David had grown up being a shepherd, just tending his father's sheep. And as David grew older, um, he became a, a, a mighty follower of God. The story of David and Goliath, the same David that was a shepherd, is the same David that totally slayed a nine-foot giant when he was our, our older boys' age, 13, 14 years old, is when how old he was when he slayed Goliath, a, a huge warrior with full armor, a huge sword that would come out and that the entire Israelite army was afraid of. And David, with a sling and a stone, ended up killing him. The stone struck Goliath in the forehead and, and Goliath was gone. And then um, uh, uh, David was told that he was going to be the next king of Israel. 
And Saul, who was the king of Israel, was very, very jealous of David, did not want another person to be king over him. And because of that, Saul pursued David constantly. Trying to, he tried to kill him several times. And David would have to flee and go hide in caves and, and hide in places to flee Saul. And David's the one that said that, Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. So, what do we do when we can't sleep? We need to be like David, and we need to turn to our all-powerful God. And what David did was he turned to truth. And this is our truth. This is our truth. He turned to truth. This is our truth. What do you do when people are saying things about you or when they disappointed you or when something didn't come through that you thought should come through and your mind is absorbed with all of that? You need to replace it with God's truth. This is the perfect match for every single problem that we are going to face. There's not one thing in here that's not in here that, that isn't going to be for us. That this is why God, God knew that we were going to need it. And every answer to every problem that you're going to face is in this word. Memorize it. Learn it. Allow him to become your mighty rock and your refuge. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who do we go to? God. We go to Jesus. And he is the one that should give us the rest. He's the one that will give us rest because God's promises are always a perfect match for our problems. If the only thing that you get out of my message today of rest easy is that God's promises are a perfect match for our problems, then that's what I want you to go away with. And where are those promises? His word. His word is what's truth. Everything that's outside of this is the world, and it comes at us, and it comes at us at full force, and it tries to be like that tiger. It tries to knock us down. But when we are grounded in this, we are strong. We are not shaken. We will, be not, we will not be moved. Um, so today is Mother's Day, and um, like we talked about, and so I just wanted to tell you guys that me as a mother, like, I've had several things that have caused me to not be able to have rest sometimes with our own children. Um, Pastor Tim and I have been married for 21 years, and like I said, in this June, we'll be married 21 years. We have our three boys, and during that time, it's not always been easy. Um, just because we're a pastor's family doesn't mean that we are protected from physical things, from financial things, from emotional things. Everything that you guys get hit with, we get hit with as well. Um, like last Sunday, Tim, Pastor Tim was preaching, and um, we had to leave. I had to leave this service because our middle son had, um, we thought, broke his ankle, but thankfully it wasn't straight to x-rays, didn't get to eat lunch last Sunday at all because I was in urgent care with him. He, and so I took him, and Pastor Tim went out to our vehicle, and um, it wouldn't start because the alternator was dead. So like, you know, like things like that, that's like life, you know, life. It's just life. And like there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you guys, you have the right perspective on who is in control. Who's in control? Who's in control of this situation? So um, our oldest son um, has autism. And I know what it is like to have a crazy toddler that is just completely 100% out of control. And that how long days are in that that it's chaotic and it's crazy and and we didn't know what we were going to do. I know what it's like to have to carry him when as he got older into school every single day with back arched and screaming because school caused him so many sensory or disorders and stuff, so many sensory issues, he couldn't get through a normal school day and stuff. I know what it's like to be able to have to find therapists and doctors and books and stuff that you're constantly reading and filling yourself with information with because you're losing rest over your son of like, how do I help him? How do I get the tools that he needs? Will my son be able to go to college and live a normal life? I don't have the answers to all of those questions yet. Our, our middle son has autoimmune um, diseases. And because of that, he's had tons of doctor's appointments, been in the hospital stays and stuff. At one point, he had had so many IVs and had gotten so much blood work done in such a short amount of time, they could not find a usable vein on him. They need to do more blood work, and every single one of his veins were completely shot because of how many different doctors and stuff he's had to go to in such a short amount of time. 
medications that completely lost his personality. He lost almost all of his hair and stuff. Like, as a mom, like, I can say that, like, I've had things happen to me as a mom that has caused me to lose rest, that has caused me to have um, anxiety and fear, things, things like that. But here's what I do know. Fear can rob us from the rest that God desires for us. And fear of an unknown, fo- uh, a fear of an unknown future can be a very powerful force. In Matthew 6.34, it says this, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. Don't worry about tomorrow. I don't know what about is going to happen in the future of our son with autism. I don't know if our son is going to get more autoimmune diseases as he gets older and has gone through puberty. I don't know what's going to happen, but you know what? That's tomorrow. That's not today. And God says, I will meet your needs today. In the Bible, it is very clear that he says that he will meet your needs when it's now. I will meet your needs. When now is now, that's when God shows up. That's when he meets our needs. When tomorrow is now, he will meet us in the now. We have a a boy, one of our, our youngest is actually upstairs in Pastor Tim's office sick today of all days. So um, he's upstairs with a trash can and with a plastic liner in it, um, laying upstairs on, on Tim's office because he's, he's sick today. And um, I went upstairs before the first gathering, before I preached the first gathering, and I said, are you okay, buddy? And he goes, what if I'm sick tomorrow? And I said, buddy, it's not tomorrow. All we need to worry about is right now. What's not tomorrow, folks? What, when, when something that you're anxious or worried about is happening tomorrow, you don't need to be worried about that. Each day has enough troubles of its own. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. When tomorrow is now, God will meet you in that. There's no sense for you to fear or have anxiety over something that is not now because God will meet you in your now. He will meet you in your now. Um, Proverbs 31 is a chapter in the Bible that talks about the virtuous woman. And one of the verses in there, Proverbs 31, 25, it says this, she can laugh at the days to come. She can laugh at the days to come. How does a woman or a man get to the point where they can laugh at the days to come? That woman, that man, they know who holds the future. They know who holds it. They can laugh at the days to come because they know who holds the future. And that they is someone that they trust. They trust him. They trust God. They know that he holds the future, and they completely, dependently, 100% trust him. When you're laying in bed at night wondering about a financial problem, wondering about a physical problem that you or a loved one is facing, a loss of some kind, a relationship that's not what it should be, you need to do two things. Pray, then trust, and then you can rest. Pray, then trust, then rest. Prayer. God, I give this to you. I'm worried about this situation. I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but I give this to you. I'm going to give this to you. Then trust. He's big enough to handle it. He can handle it. He's big enough. There's not one thing that happens in our lives that Jesus says, oh my word, that caught me completely by surprise. I had no idea that was going to (laughs) happen. Jesus has never said, that is brand new information. He's, he's never said any of those things. Nothing keeps him off, um, nothing catches him off guard. He knows everything that's going to happen. We can trust him. He's big enough to handle it. He already holds the answer. He knows exactly what he's going to do. He has a plan. So we can rest. So pray, trust, and then rest. Having a tiger jump out at me was not the only time that I've run into scary animals. Um, When I was a little kid, I spent over an hour sitting on top of a fence while there was a vicious, mean dog at the bottom of the fence. And I just stayed there until help came because I wasn't going down. Um, When I was was in my 20s, um, we were in a neighborhood um, helping out a friend. And the people in that neighborhood that lived across the street from our friends um, had two 
um, German shepherds that were trained to attack dogs. And they had gotten loose before, and the dog warden had been called on them several times because they had, they had taken down people from the neighborhood, and um, one person had to get taken to the emergency room and everything from these dogs. These dogs should not have been allowed to be out and stuff, but um, we were helping out a friend. We were house-sitting for them, and our car was parked at the end of their driveway, and I got up to go to work in the morning, and I was walking to my car, and the dogs were out those two German shepherd attack dogs were out and they had targeted me as their next kill. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen trained attack dogs, but they don't make any noise as they're running. And their ears are straight up, their tails are back, and they are just focused, no noise. Two of them side by side together running full force at me. And this was before you had remote control, lock and unlock buttons. You had a key that you had to take and turn and then open the door. So I'm running, and I had to dress up at this job that I was in. I was running in a straight skirt, (laughs) key in hand, and I unlocked the door. I shut it as the dog leapt at the window. The moment I shut it, he was there, bam, against the window. And, and I, again, I, God helped me. He protected me. I was safe. But those fear, that when things like that happen to you, it can cause you to be fearful of things to happen again in the future. And I allowed that fear to control me for quite a while. We live out in the country, and there's dogs all around that our neighbors have and other people have. So I don't mind dogs if I know the dog and if I know the owners. We have a dog. But when I don't know, I get very skeptical because I've had some bad experiences. And so being very skeptical, I haven't, I didn't ever want to go on a walk um, around our property if somebody wasn't with me. If I was all by myself, I didn't want to go because I was afraid that a dog would come up and run up after me. And so for years, I didn't do something which I love, which is go on walks when I exercise and stuff because I was afraid of doing it. I would only go where I knew I'd be safe or with somebody else, but I'd never just go off on my own and do this. And so I, I just was praying about it of like, I'm being robbed from something I really enjoy because I'm afraid. And so I need to learn how to not be afraid. I don't want to be afraid of this anymore. So I just decided I'm not going to be afraid. And so I um, started going on walks. And the longer I went on them, the more confident that I got this is going to be okay. And so I've been doing this for years now. And there have been times, many times, that a stray dog has come up to me. And instead of being paralyzed in fear like I was with that tiger, I've been able to stand there in a posture of command and be able to say to the dog, no, go home to the dog. And because of that, it's been really empowering for me. I've gotten back something that I lost for years because I allow, I'd allow that fear to roll over me. I think that there are things in every single one of our lives that we are afraid of, and so it limits us in what we're going to do. We get paralyzed by things. Our relationship's going to be safe. Um, are we going to be able to ever switch jobs to a different transition? Because what if it doesn't work out? Um, are we going to be able to um, handle this financially? Is this emotional crisis, physical crisis, this is ever going to go away? And sometimes we allow ourselves to be trapped in things that we're fearful of because we don't want to move forward. And I want to encourage you today, there might be some things in your life that you need to say no, go home to, that you need to get rid of. And you need to stand in that posture of, I'm in control of this situation, and I'm going to say no, go home. What fear keeps you from resting easy that you need to say no, go home to? Um, Louis Giglio is um, the president of, well, he's a pastor of a Passion City Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And everything that's passion is Louis Giglio. And he's recently written a book called Goliath Must Fall. And in that, it's a really great quote from him that says this. We don't weave a magic wand over whatever is causing us to fear and have it instantly disappear. We simply relegate our fear to its proper place on the other side of Jesus in our view. With eyes fixed on Jesus, we cry out, you are in control. I love this quote. I love how it talks about we relegate our fear to its proper place on the other side of Jesus in our view. When our focus is on our fear, we are going to allow that fear 
to have impact in our lives and steal us and rob from us, rob us of rest, rob us from other things. But when we put Jesus as our focus, then our focus is on him instead of our fear. So what the world wants us to do, what Satan wants us to do, is they, he wants to put our fear here and God and his truth here. So our focus is here. But when we switch this and God is here and his truth, our perfect match for our problems are here and our fear is here, we can't see our fear any longer because we relegated our fear to where it's supposed to be behind Jesus, who is the one that's able to handle every single thing that happens to us in our lives. It's Psalm 23 um, is one of my favorite psalms. It's a great psalm um, that um, I read again lately. Um, it was, again, written by David, who was a shepherd. He knew, he knew about um, what a shepherd is. And, and David wrote this psalm filled with so much truth. And it says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There's more to it. Oh, well, okay. Anyways, this is a really popular psalm. And I grew up knowing the psalm and have read it and heard it hundreds of times in my life. But have you ever read or experienced something that you're really familiar with, and the next time that you see it, it's like something jumps out at you. They're like, where's that been? Where's that always been? And that happened to me re recently when I was reading Psalm 23. And the fact is that um, it was all in, in verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Um, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What this verse is saying is that even though we go through difficult times, and we will go through difficult times, we don't have to fear or get anxious because God is with us. And he's not only is he with us, he brought, he brought along some really handy tools to help him out. And according to Psalm 23, those really handy tools that Jesus brings to help him out are called the rod and the staff. Do you guys know what rod and staff are used for by shepherds? The, the shepherds use rod and staff to tend their sheep. And God, to us, we are his sheep. He is our good shepherd, and we are his sheep. And he brings his rod and staff when he um, comes to take care of us. A rod is used as a source of protection. When wild animals or something comes to attack one of the sheep, the shepherd will use his rod to hit the animal and protect his sheep. And the staff is used to guide the sheep. When a sheep is heading the wrong direction, the, the shepherd will reach out in his staff to steer it back to where it's supposed to go. Sometimes they would say the little crook on a shepherd's staff, you know, like this, that they would wring it by its neck, you know, gently, and kind of prod it back along. I think that's what God, like, wants to do to us, right? Ring us by the neck and, like, you're getting off track here, you know, come, come back to where you're supposed to be. But the staff guides the sheep. And so after the shepherd uses the rod to protect his sheep and uses the staff to guide the sheep, then the, sh the shepherd's staff is also used as a tool that the shepherd will rest against. So after the shepherd uses the rod to protect and the staff to guide, the shepherd can lean against his staff to rest. We have a loving Heavenly Father that guides us to his truth and protects us so that we can rest. I found this um, picture several months ago, and I just I saved it because I really loved it. And it says this, Daniel slept in a lion's den. Peter slept in a prison. Jesus slept in a storm. No matter your circumstance, you can take a nap. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Daniel, who was, who was um, being attacked for his faith, got thrown in a den of lions. And he was able to rest there because he knew who his God was. He knew that he would be okay. Well, no matter what the outcome was, he trusted in, in his God. And Peter, in prison, rested. I don't think any of us of what we're going through today is in a lion's den. 
or in a prison or in the middle of a storm when Jesus has slept, though the waves are crashing and everybody said we're going to get shipwrecked and we're all going to die. And Jesus was like woke up and he basically was like, what's the big deal? He knew what was going to happen. He knew what, who was in control. He knew the, what the outcome was going to be. Daniel slept in the lion's den. Peter slept in a prison. Jesus slept in a storm. No matter your circumstance, you can take a nap. Their circumstance did not concern them because they knew who their God was. There's this another quote from Lisa Tear Curse that I just I hang on to all the time. It's the peace of our soul doesn't rise and fall with unpredictable people or situations. If we want peace to be given to us by people or circumstances, we are only, we're going to be robbed of rest all the time. The peace of our soul does not rise and fall with unpredictable people or situations. The peace of our soul is tethered to all that God is. Our peace comes from who God is. Daniel, Peter, so many others, Jonah got swallowed by a whale. I mean, there's story after story after story. They knew who their God is. And when we know who our God is, we can rest. We can rest in that. We're going to take this time right now just kind of like as a reflection um, for you guys to think about where in your life are you being robbed of rest? What kind of things that are going on in your life that are stealing from peace that is causing you to not be able to rest easy? There might be situations that you're facing that are physical. There might be things that are relational going on. There might be um, financial problems that are happening in your life. Um, whatever the circumstance is, God is a big enough God to handle what is going on. And he doesn't want you to worry about your tomorrows. He wants you to focus on right now because right now God will meet your needs. He, will, he wants to just focus on this moment right now. So um, as you guys um, close your eyes, we're going to spend this time praying together. Lord, I just pray for everybody that's here right now. Lord, that you will help them to think about those things that are robbing from their, them from rest, Lord, and that they will be able to look at that thing that is causing them to not get rest and say, no, go home to it. And they will put it in its proper place behind you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will be with those that don't have you in their life. They can't, can't relegate the fear behind you because you're not part of their lives yet. I pray for those here that need to come to know you as their Savior, Lord, that they might make that decision today and that they will put you at the focus of their life, God, because you desire for us to rest in you, Lord. You are our perfect refuge. Lord, I pray that as we continue our time worshiping together here, Lord, that you will allow us to be released from the things that are causing us a lack of rest, Lord, and that we will put our trust in you, the perfect match for every single problem that we are going to face. We are going to be um, singing a song. It's a new song that we've not done here at New Hope yet. Um, if you want to stand with us as we worship,